the May 23rd meeting of the Hadley Select Board. In the business, we do have a consent agenda this evening. Um, there are three items here. We have the approval of minutes from April 5th, 12th, and 26th. We have warrants 1748, uh, 1748S, and payroll warrant 1747. And then we also have a request for a one day liquor license, which is a change request from Malton Wine to an all alcohol license, and that is for the WGBY Asparagus Festival to be held on June 3rd, 2017 at the Town Common. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion on these articles? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Can I ask uh, why the change for the all alcohol? Sure. Seeing that she's here this evening. Yes. Yeah. So everybody really, will understand. Um, we're, we're not proposing to have a, a, an open bar or something like that on the common, but two of our brewers, well, one of our brewers from New Elements Brewing, also distills the spirit and he wanted to be able to sample it at the festival and since if we were and since we so we asked and we thought we paul from b1 vodka would also be welcome to come over and sample his vodka too if we had this change but we couldn't under the beer and mm -hmm. wine so it's really so these two local brewers who also have a, a one distiller and one brewer can also come and sample one of their spirits it's not to have an open bar or a all liquor event and I, and I thank you for taking the extra time to revisit the permit sure. to allow us to invite them. Certainly. Okay. So motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, Marie. Thank you very much. Did you I, want to I hope some of you will them? join us on June 3rd. Right. So do you want to um, you got your free public minutes. service announcement? You got your free, free time here. Entertainment. I just, I just want to say that um, on behalf of WGB Wire, our viewers, our board, and our staff, we're delighted to be hosting this festival once again here in Hadley. That Hadley just happens to be in the center of this fabulously rich cult, uh, heritage here in Western Massachusetts and the home of one of the most important crops uh, over the last 150 years, which gives us the opportunity to celebrate all things local and agricultural. So please come out and join us next Saturday. Uh, we hope to see you there. All right. Thank Thanks, Marie. Thank you. And you're all invited. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um, we do have one item that was not on the agenda this evening that we'd like to take um, early, and there's been a request from our police department for an appointment um, that needs to happen for staffing purposes. And I believe Sergeant Cook is in the hallway. Sergeant Cook? Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I believe our uh, our police chief is not with us this evening. He's uh, away at a training training program. Correct. But we do have our two illustrious sergeants with us this evening in his stead. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you very much. Yep. So, what would you like us to know? All right. Um, so, Chief Mason sends his regards from training. Uh, we present to you this evening Jose Cabrera, who's been a special police officer for us since August of 2016. Previous to that, and up until recently, he was a part-time officer uh, working for Sunderland Police Department. Uh, he applied for and navigated our most recent full-time process and was named as a finalist. Jose has always and continued to give his 100% during every moment that he's at work. He's expressed an interest in becoming involved in more specialized areas of the department, has proven to be a team player, and is very well liked amongst peers. He's a talkative officer and has shown no issues in communicating effectively with anyone he com comes in contact with, and he will make a fine addition to our department. If you choose to appoint him to full-time, he will be on a probationary period during which he will have to attend a full-time police officer's academy. On behalf of Chief Mason, Sergeant Hartwright, Sergeant Costa, and I proudly recommend Officer Jose Cabrera to be appointed as our newest full-time police officer. Okay. Right. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Glad to have him. If not, very welcome. Yeah, Thank very, you. very welcome. We're pleased to have you. All in favor? Aye. All in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations. And are these. Uh, uh, who's with you? Yeah. Other. Oh, uh, that's my mom. 
<laughs> well, Lisa, that's my best friend's mom, Judy. <laughs> Welcome. Sure. Thanks for joining us on this problem. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Okay, well, good. So good luck with uh, your staffing. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. And may it be a quiet summer for all of you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no drama. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, we we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, we're going back to work now. <laughs> so, Can I ask one question? Sure. Uh, when do you anticipate that he would have to leave for Academy? Uh, anticipate early winter. Uh, probably early, uh, winter, early so. of 2018, sometime January. Okay, February. so he's going to get acclimated with the force and we're not going to lose another man right away. Correct. He has, he has already cleared our field training program. So he is already out on the road and on his own. So on uh, Friday at 7 p.m., he will start as uh, he'll start his full-time career list. Good. Good. All right, great, super. All right, and thank you to the entire force as always. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, we do have time for a public comment period. You tell him, Sergeant Cook, which car is mine to. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> we have a picture of it in the station. Oh, do you? Sure, thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is anybody here for public comment this evening? No. All right. Then uh, next on the agenda, let's see. We have a 7:15 appointment, but we can we'll skip over that until we get to that allotted time frame. Um, David, the Commonwealth IT grant, do you want to talk about that? Okay, so we applied for the Commonwealth uh, IT grant back on April 1st. Uh, we asked for a total of $172,000 uh, under that grant. Awards were told, we were informed that awards of up to $200,000 were possible. The Commonwealth has set aside um, $2 million for this, um, this project and that Communities that had previously participated in the Commonwealth Compact program, Hadley being one of those, had priority in this uh, in this uh, round of funding. Um, it was a very popular program. Nearly 90 communities applied for almost eight million dollars out of the two million that were available. So we got a partial award. We were awarded uh, fifty thousand dollars. And the scope of work spells out that they would like us to, to, to implement the SCADA system at the wastewater uh, treatment uh, plant. The SCADA system is going to cost us $100,000, we estimate. So we'll have to raise the additional funds at the uh, fall town meeting. How much is uh, SCADA going to cost us? About $100,000. So, so this isn't going to help us with our kind of <coughs> immediate, imminent issues of the... Um, you know, town hall and right. They right. didn't. They so didn't fund that part. Okay. Wasn't the last time skate in front of us? It was twenty six thousand dollars. That was for. That was. Hall. That was for an upgrade at the uh, water treatment plant. Okay. The, uh, so, we have until June thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. So next June, to uh, spend this money. So we have plenty of time do, to. Do the rest of the applications stay in there in case this program's evolves again next year? Or? We'd have to resubmit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So tonight what we need to do then is um, execute the contract, right? But until we raise the other money, it's kind of a moot point anyway, but this at least is positioning it so that if we are able to secure the funding, right. we can move forward. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, could I mm -hmm. ask David to give a brief explanation? People out there are probably all saying, what is the SCADA system? Sure. What is it going to do in the sewer department? Just to give them yep. a little input of what we're talking about. Okay, so SCADA, we're talking alphabet soup, so for the folks who are watching, uh, we'll spell it out. Uh, it's supervisory control and data acquisition is SCADA. And basically it's a way of uh, remote monitoring uh, the wastewater treatment plant, uh, as well as accessing its critical system so that we can make adjustments whenever there's an operational change or if there's some sort of alarm that's triggered. So we have the system up in place for the water treatment plant. Uh, it allows us to remotely control the plant on uh, times of emergency or weather events. Uh, it allows us to monitor what the, the plant is doing. So we don't have such a system in place for most of the wastewater treatment system. I think we have it in place for pump stations one and four. That was part of the upgrade. Yeah, one and four, when we put the new pump stations in, we put limited access to, to SCADA. Right. Uh, and it's it's been working out real well. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the three of us are, are kind of getting used to it and how it operates and what it does. And during a thunderstorm, you know, you don't have to run to those two places immediately. You just go right remotely. You, you can do it remotely right off your iPhone right. or iPad or computer and see that it's running again and go on to the important <coughs> ones that, that aren't monitored. Right. So we have a seven additional pumping stations and the treatment plant itself, which are not covered by the SCADA system. So this would be a huge advance forward for the town of Hadley. It's identified as a need in the sewer capital plan that was created back in 2006, seven, something like that. So that's part of, part of what we've been uh, working toward anyways. Okay, so does anyone want to make a motion that we move forward with the Could contract? I ask one more question. Sure. Would we possibly have additional funding in the in enterprise fund to the augment it at this right. time or not yet? We can use uh, we can use uh, money from the um, uh, sewer impact fee fund, and I think that there might be sufficient money in there right now to cover it. Uh, and yes, you can use uh, water reserves. So this shouldn't affect the water rate, uh, sewer rates again. Should not affect Possibly. water, That's water or sewer rates or tax avoid. rate. Thank you. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, start the implementation of this program. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay. Great. Um, and then let's see. Before our appointment, um, notice of intent to sell Chapter 61A land, Hoynaski. David. Okay, so Dan is here from the assessor's office. He may have a finer grain analysis of, uh, of this property. Uh, there is approximately 10 acre lot at the intersection of Stockbridge Road and uh, River Drive, uh, which is uh, under the uh, Mass General Law Chapter 61A Protected Farmland Program. This land is up to be sold and under the tax breaks that are allowed uh, for this property, uh, the town of Hadley has a right of first refusal, and you can take up to 120 days to exercise that right of first refusal. The, uh, the realtor is asking that the select board waive their right of first refusal and to waive the 120-day waiting period. Conservation Commission has asked that you defer any action on this until they have a chance to meet <coughs> uh, which will have a chance to meet prior to your next meeting on June 7th. Okay, so we can move this off then to the June 7th meeting? That's you right. Make a motion? Uh, sure. Make a motion to uh, acknowledge the conservation's request and put this off for a week, please. Um, I'd, I'd still like to. Do you have the figures, Dan? On the taxes for that 61A right now? The back uh, taxes on the five years, Dan, if we exercise. Yeah, I don't I don't have the exact figure, but you're looking at probably around twelve to thirteen thousand in rollback. Is that taxed? If it's being sold as business, there's just a question been raised tonight that whether it's the tax rate when it's retro is based on building lots as it's going to be sold for, or is it done on farmland, it's which has been previously used for? It's based on they've been taxed as farmland, and it, we also assess it at full value. Okay. So it's, it's basically a vacant residential piece of land that's being farmed. So they would pay the difference between what they would have paid and what they actually paid for the last five years. As vacant as business as vacant. lots. As vacant. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So the back parcel was already planted for this year, but there's nothing planted along the road. So I would imagine they're probably going to turn those into building lots. Uh, I haven't seen any plans on it. Yeah, this is kind of early, you know, but. To make that worthwhile, they spent four hundred thousand dollars for that property, and they're not going to just keep it farmland, you know. So I would assume you can fit probably five or six lots along the road with the oh, the road, and if they put in a street, they were saying four. That's it what, could, yeah, that's what, it could be four. what I read. <coughs> there, four, four there's houses a few, there. Yeah, there's a few issues with the underground utilities going <coughs> through there. Uh, Amherst wastewater uh, effluent line goes through there also. So. Okay. Yeah, so I motion know, was made out, in out motion. of Stockbridge, uh, Stockwell, I mean Stockbridge, and goes down 47. Okay, so motion made and seconded to defer this to June 7th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
7.15, perfect. All right, we have an appointment this evening, which was a continuation from last week um, with our Park and Rec Commission. Um, so this is a joint meeting, a posted meeting with the Park and Rec Commission, um, and the appointment is to fill the current vacancy on the commission. So I also believe that you have a signed, sealed, and delivered, right? We yes. do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For my absenteeism person. Here, right. So, yeah. so um, I have not received any further inquiries or interest for this um, position. I don't know if they would have been directed to you, maybe. So. But I didn't get any. You didn't get any. Yeah. Okay. So with that said. We haven't got any additionals. I don't want it to sound like we don't have them. Right. We have a great additional, one. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with that said, I would love um, to appoint Marianne Noonan uh, to that vacant spot now. As members of select board, I'd like to make that motion as well. I'll okay. second that. Okay, motion made and seconded. Now, do we need to read what's printed here? No, I don't think so, but you do need to take a roll call vote. Roll call vote. Okay, so before we do that, motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion, questions, grilling of Marianne? On <laughs> <laughs> How many kids do you have? Do you have I think we grilled her enough <laughs> last week. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave her off the hook. Okay. All right, David, do you want to do a roll call? Was, was Skevitz? Yes. Devine? Yes. Kagan? Yes. Chungla? Yes. And Pachinski? Yes. And Diane? Yes. Okay. Unanimous. And you want to look at the envelope? This doesn't moment. count, but just we'll read the the the, uh, the, letter, out of, the letter out of courtesy. But it's uh, please accept my absentee vote in support of Marianne Noonan of Sunrise Drive to fill the vacancy on the Hadley Park Commission created by the resignation of Sarah Palmisano, uh, Andy Kopaki. And just for the record, because I know people will call in tomorrow, this doesn't count, but it is an information. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Robin. Thank, Thank you, you Marianne. Thank you for stepping up. Yeah. We also um, are already getting inquiries about um, the replacement mm -hmm. um, for Kathy's position, as well as um, an interim, which I've been talking with David by mm -hmm. electronically about the process for that. So I think that we're. Um, we have a meeting on the books tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. So okay. I'm going to try and move forward with that so we can try and make that transition as seamless as possible with summer mm -hmm. activities underway. Okay. Okay. That's good. It's up to your board, your elected officials. So does um, Mary Jane Mary Ann, Mary Mary Ann. Ann, uh, need to be sworn <coughs> in by Jessica? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Before some your meeting. Kathy had an assistant right at a point now will she step up in the interim to fill some of the gap or she's no longer there i don't know she hasn't been there since I for quite a while so you there. don't have an assistant now currently there is no assistant. okay i didn't i thought you did mm -hmm. okay that's fine we're starting to pursue that and getting the job description and kind of trying to tweak that and then just with the move we were kind of trying to get settled in before mm -hmm. we move forward with that okay, okay. okay. If I might David, just yeah. pipe up on that, I'm David Albin from Huntington Road, and I live across the uh, street from the park. And I just wanted to reiterate the important role Kathy has played with the volunteers, the Friends of Zaturka Park, in getting things moving. I know when you go past the park these days, it doesn't look great, but uh, I think David can verify. We just uh, advertised for this year's landscaping to clean up the site, stabilize it. Um, that's going back and forth, both with our uh, landscape designer, Berkshire Design, and uh, we're in the process of procuring a landscape uh, landscape contractor. So Kathy's been important, and I have a little bit of concern that uh, if she's playing a reduced role, uh, we may not have the capacity in town government to work on an almost daily basis, I think, with both our, our design contractor and when we're in construction. So I just wanted to express that and hope we can find um, you know, a way to, to keep going forward after Kathy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a little bit of an interesting situation because I mean, you, you'd think it would fall under the Park and Rec Commission, but yet it, it really hasn't up until this point. Um, but to your point, taxpayers have voted 
you know, CPA funding for this project. So we want to make sure that the taxpayer dollars are properly shepherded um, and we don't really have a tie to the, a formal tie to the town at this point with, with the yeah, Friends of Satrika Park. Yeah. And if I can be frank, the, the commissioners have not been um, a real active partner right. in, in the park planning with mm -hmm. us. We've briefed them a few times, but we haven't, um, we haven't, you know, we've been meeting weekly and working with the, the, the uh, landscape architect regularly. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm concerned about the, the lack of engagement of the commissioners. So I'm wondering if there's another way that we can administer the project. Mm -hmm. And if I could be frank, um, we have been very on the record um, at our park and rec meetings that are usually recorded that the park and rec commissioners were looking to the friends of Zaturka Park. Mm -hmm. to come to us with their recommendations and ideas. This is not something that we are doing as commissioners, this is, but we are fully supporting. So I don't want it to be that it has been hands off, but our role in this is, we feel, to have an engagement to know what's going on, but not do the stuff that the Friends of Zaturk Park are doing. So that might have been miscommunicated, but we have gotten our briefings and we are apprised of what's going on on it, but, and Andy definitely has gone out to the site, but mm -hmm. I don't, I want you to be understanding where we're coming from with that. Okay. Well, I mean, it seems like we, we probably have some um, thinking to do about that. I mean, again, the DPW, you know, I mean, I'm thinking in terms of project management may have some role here, but they're pretty over, overtaxed right now. Marlo's not here to defend himself either, <laughs> <laughs> in fairness, but um, maybe maybe we need to have some further conversation. I mean, and this, this in part goes to the going forward, the whole structure of park and rec. You know, um, what's the role of the park and rec director, the commissioners? This is going to be the only park we have in town um, going forward, so. The Any bids, thoughts? The bids are due on June 7th. Now I've gotten some revised specifications, so I'll take a look at those tomorrow morning and get those out to the to the prospective vendors. Uh, if the specification revisions are extensive, then I'll probably push that due date out a little bit just to give everybody a fair crack at it. Uh, but there will be a time when the bid will have to be awarded, and the Park and Rec Commissioners have broad authority over parks. Um, and there may be, I can foresee some sort of agreement between the Park Commission and the Select Board to make sure that we have solid management on this and the future projects moving forward so that there's clear lines of command and control. We've run into difficulties with projects where there are too many people sort of not really in charge but interested and so forth and that's gotten us into some troubles in the past so we don't want to replicate that that experience, and I'm sure everybody will agree with, with the fact that we want to have something at the end of the day that everybody can feel good about and proud about and that, that the community will value. Mm -hmm. In okay. the past, Ms. Turka was attending your friends' meetings? Yeah. And she was the liaison to the commissioners. Right. So now probably <coughs> maybe a commissioner could be appointed to do that in the interim and bring it back to the pool oh, commission and I think it'll pick up where it left off basically, it seems. Unless maybe uh, Ms. Zaturka would like to stay involved in the park? I'm definitely gonna continue to be a core member of the Friends Group. Okay. I just don't have the, uh, I won't yeah. as of June 30 have the town tie and I've been taking care of all of the work. Um, getting the bills to the commission and then the CPA and all of that for approval. What I'm saying is, can you still have the contact with the commission if you're going to be involved with the friends for mm -hmm. on a temporary basis here to, to keep it moving? Sure, it would be nice to have more than support but more authoritative figure yeah. from the commission and or select board, which yeah. you guys sort of have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, as a I mean, support is one thing, but it's really the authority that is what we're yeah. talking about. And um, I think I've sort of played that role. Um, 
And so, sure, I'm willing to help out in any way I can. Okay. All right, well, maybe, David, we could have some conversation with the Park and Rec mm -hmm. um, commissioners, too, and just put our heads together and figure out what we might be able to yeah. work out. Okay. Okay, but uh, thank you for bringing that. It's a very valid point. Again, we don't want taxpayer dollars to languish, you know, and go. Um, so maybe when Andy fall, gets back, we you know, can have a full board Absolutely. discussion. Yep. Okay. I don't feel like we should be telling the Park and Rec commissioners they're the elected officials, um, and I certainly think that they bring, you know, things to the table that I'm sure will benefit everyone yep I just yeah. want to make sure that right yeah you know, we have to have that point of contact right but we I don't think that we are involved with David is as a procurement officer right um, so that's his niche and what he has to do to help process the um, bids and that sort of thing for everybody mm -hmm. um, but as a select board member I don't feel like I Need to no, oversee I don't think we that either. Yeah, all right. but uh, but we need to make sure there's a structure in place. I think, I think, I think we have enough on our plates for. too. So exactly. Yeah. But since Kathy's been doing all the work right, right. along from day one here, I, I mean it would just be nice for the community if she stayed involved with the park and rec. You know, oh, yeah. she's mm -hmm. done such a great job throughout this whole process so far. Thank so. Okay, so that's the plan. Plan. So you guys will meet and discuss and talk about how to bridge that? Absolutely. I mean, I feel the way it's been going along has been the way that the commissioners have planned for it to go along, um, although it may be interpreted differently. So having Kathy's role, you know, being that, however we deem it at the end, but mm -hmm. still, I mean, obviously, being our only park, we are fully invested in that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, and yeah, yeah. and we'll talk afterwards about Absolutely. how we can communicate better. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Senior Center and Fire Substation Building Committee updates. Where, where do we begin? The senior Center tomorrow. Three o'clock and six o'clock. There's going to be design meetings. Um, it's at the uh, Hopkins Academy gym. Or the, uh, the Hopkins cap Academy. Cafeteria or the uh, gym? Actually, don't know. Okay. Well, all the plans are going to be over at the Hopkins Academy tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon. Three o'clock tomorrow night. Six o'clock. Come see the design for the senior center. And just a reminder of the chicken to go on June 11th. I want to make sure we drop that in there again. And the tickets will be available tomorrow evening. They'll be there. So. So the, the, with the fire substation, um, okay, so the fire substation is still in design phase. Um, there was a meeting yesterday with the, uh, the cost estimators and early, early estimations of the construction costs received from the cost estimate firms reveal a shortfall in the pro project budget. So there was a meeting yesterday, the scope of work was reviewed, the numbers were reviewed. The shortfall, potential shortfall, is between six hundred thousand and seven hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, based upon final scope of work. Um, Mr. Michkowski came to see me. Uh, Chief Spanknabel came to see me, and together we agreed that we should put this project on hold administratively until a viable plan to move forward can be developed. Building committee is meeting on June 1st, and they plan to meet with the select board on June 7th. Uh, we discussed possible options for raising the additional money. Obviously, we would need a town meeting vote, probably po followed by a town meeting ballot question. Uh, and I've given in my uh, weekly report some of the time for schedules for getting that done. Fast tracking this project is obviously in their interest. Um, but I think at a minimum we should have a meeting to talk about uh, th uh, the project and how to move it forward. Comments? Meeting tomorrow with the OPM. We met with the OPM 
the outside estimator, their estimator, and architect. The project there, when they did the borings, the, yep. the fill in there is not the right fill, so they got to excavate that out, bring 12 feet down, bring some fill to fill that, then they got to preload that, and it's going to set either three to six months, so that building won't settle. So, but your, your design is not, <coughs> it hasn't changed. There hasn't been any additions. There's been no change to it. Our problem now seems to be that the site needs adjustments and more mitigation than was originally planned. Well, it's just totally unforeseen. Who can see exactly. that, that could happen onto this site until you do the board site and then everything. And what we asked for is to say, <coughs> if the board will agree to have a special town meeting to go to town meeting to ask for additional funds for this to complete this project or we do some drastic cuts in it and don't blame us for having what they did on this uh, safety complex because this is no Taj Mahal it's everything that's needed in a f in the fire substation and uh, there's no thrills or frills in this project but is the board in, even interested in allowing this to go to a special meeting? Because why I say a special meeting, to bring this out to the fall, would have to tack on another $100,000 on this bill. Why is that? The, for escalation, for delays. Just by these delays, it's another 50000 On top of six or 700000 no, that's included in the seven hundred to fifty thousand. How much have we spent on this project so far? Uh, how much have we spent on the project so far? We've spent <coughs> approximately uh, three thousand dollars per month for the OPM services, and I uh, paid a twenty-eight thousand dollar bill for the um, for the architect. I know that there's some outstanding bills associated with the geotech site survey. Uh, and uh, the soil evaluation. So those amount probably to $10,000 at this point. You're what probably about? looking after all your bills, probably close to 100 grand right now with the, all the architect's work and everything. Is there any opportunity to look at other sites? And what if you hit up the, the same thing with that? I'm just asking. You know, well, you're not paying nothing for the land. That's the key well, thing. Well, we're, we're paying whatever this overrun is for the land. I mean, well, as far as I'm still, concerned. that's still cheaper than buying a piece of land. Are, really. we, are we paying seven hundred up to $700,000? There's $400,000 no, no, piece of property that we were looking at up for sale right now in Chapter 61. It just came up at the beginning of the meeting. Is, when they went through, when, when they go through this with the estimator, it's every nut and bolt in the building. We don't do that as a committee. Oh, oh to no, start. I get that. I get so that. So when they yeah. reconcile, yeah. they go back with the architect's estimators there, the architect, and this outside estimator. They go over every single all the electric, the sewer, the water, the siding, the roof, the cupola. <coughs> John, what, what John just said to you, though, is that we just talked about a piece of property, the Hynoski piece of property. It's now down to 400000 We have a right of first refusal on that property. If we were to purchase that property for four hundred thousand dollars and not incur the extra expense but that you you're know, speaking you see, you of now, I, I know we don't. But but we're one of the options is: do you think we should bore up there before we, we we? Then you don't have to cut the building, John. You're not cutting anything out. We can't expand it because we don't have the money to expand it. We're stuck the way what we are now. Because of the lot. Because you, of the you, lot. You didn't, no, you didn't want a big building. You wanted to cut down. I, I'm not saying make it bigger. I'm saying. Donald wanted to come under $3 million mm -hmm. under the project. I'm saying if we're going to spend the extra 700000 now and we can buy a piece of property up the road that it puts the exact same plot that you're talking about putting and there's an extra six acres for the town of Hadley, and we save three hundred thousand dollars because we're not paying seven hundred thousand. We're only paying four hundred for thousand for the lot. That's well. What, well, what if we don't sort get of the expansion? There's a misunderstanding vote. here. The land to correct it is about two hundred k. Five hundred k is additional expenses in the building. Mm -hmm. It's not seven hundred thousand just for the land. Right, but I, even so, I think what. 
again. I, I'm sorry. I assumed that the seven hundred thousand was to mitigate it, and that's why I asked no. earlier. No, it's not seven hundred thousand to mitigate. No. No. It's two hundred thousand to mitigate. That's what they're estimated. But the the fill that will be used to compact it, it will also be the fill that you to fill the area. So. But the building's 500000 more than you estimated right. to begin with because right. the nuts and bolts have now been right. counted. And the chief would insist on uh, a okay. sprinkle system in it because just you're not going to put that the equipment, equipment in, in there and not protect it. So in essence, Thanks, what you said, if you had to bring in fill anyways, you've got about hundred k there, and it's two hundred to mitigate the situation. Right. So in actuality, it's only 100000 more. Right. No, it's they said it's going to be the extra expenses two hundred thousand dollars than the whole thing because yeah, but we had a hundred thousand in it. But to Donald, then fill the, the land. The survey, the whole thing they do with monitoring the whole thing is is the extra expense. Mm -hmm. It's not just throw the pile. That mm -hmm. it has to be monitored the whole bit. Yeah. So there's another whole expense there. I, I just think before we go and, and authorize a special town meeting, it seems like for just a, a little bit more effort, we should, to, to John's point, if we now know that we could purchase nine acres for 400000 It would be a great investment the, for the town it, of Hadley over the next 100 years. And well, none of us are going to be here to see it, but... Well, don't forget, you're going to do that. You're going to tack on... Uh, probably another half a million dollars on this bill. Why is that? By delaying till everything's all done and said. You know, <coughs> this won't be done till the spring. And but a lot of the work that's been done is the building it, design it's itself. All, it's and it all going to be there. That's gonna it's all stuff we're going to use. Exactly. Yeah. What we told the architect yesterday is to hold till June first when he comes to our meeting, because mm -hmm. he's not going to design a build. He can't design a building without the funds right. to build it. So he'll design the building with the funds that everybody agreed with. Yeah. But is that the building we want? No. But there's no other choice. It's either that or nothing. Or we, or there we, is another if choice you, right now. I'm just telling you now. If you take this and intend to move the project there, you're not going to get done till your town meeting will not be in the fall. It'll be by next spring, then the, then the election behind it, and then add on another probably half a million dollars in this. But, but I, I think at least that. We, we don't know that. I mean, I, I think we're speculating. And I think that, I mean, I get really uncomfortable when I hear somebody on the, the building subcommittee say we're not even getting the building we want. I mean, I, I, this is a lot of we, money. We would have got the building we want if you guys listen to what we had the original price was 3.6 million but they were screaming on cutting it down screaming on coming under under three million dollars so what are you going to do Let's i would, the I would like to see what because the rest of the committee only john and, and uh the chief have seen mm -hmm. and heard what uh the opm has said i mm -hmm. i personally would like to hear their report next week yeah. uh, and bring that back to you on the 7th and make a determination then yeah. if we feel as if we need mm -hmm. to uh, continue with this project where it is and go for um, you know a special town meeting of, of that nature mm -hmm. just to see if uh, the townspeople would uh, allocate more money for this project where it is mm -hmm. okay so wait until the full yeah. committee's met I, then. I would agree with that the only other question I would have on this and maybe David could help but what would our obligations be to the OPM and architect with our signed contracts already? Yeah, so I haven't had a chance to go back into the contracts and look at the, to either of them. Mm -hmm. um, my sense is, is that we would certainly owe the, the architect for the work done up to, to this time, and now, now this project's on hold, so there shouldn't be additional charges after today. Um, the OPM is still going to have to be with this project um, because it's going to still exceed $101.5 million. So those ob cost obligations are going to come to us anyways if we, if, unless we sh would cancel the project. If we went to a different site, you're saying? No, I'm saying if you cancel it altogether. Right. If we if move it to a different site, it's just a, a change you, it of scope. Yeah. 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 
So how can you cancel the town meeting vote is to build it? I'm just yeah. I'm so just answering the question. Mm. What? Just answering the question that was asked. Okay, so um, the, <coughs> I think the suggestion is, um, and thank you for reminding me of that I forgot that the whole subcommittee hadn't even heard all of this yet. So let the subcommittee, the full subcommittee, do their work, and then come back to us on June seventh. With that being said, does at least the majority of this board? would agree if it's a favorable vote of the subcommittee agree to have a special town meeting to seek extra funding i'm not going to pin myself down when i haven't even heard what the subcommittee i'm not has saying to say. no though i'm not saying no i'm not saying yeah no. i'm just waiting what waiting out uh, uh, i'm sorry john right, you really uh, uh, right there's, now, there's really I, no reason to respond to I, this i have no problem with it. i i i just we've downsized the building now we've got options and troubles with the lots We've got another proposal in front of us that it was a site that we were looking at for a couple of years now that we took into consideration and we never brought it in front of the people. So if we're going to open that up the town, was brought in front of okay. it failed. because it didn't have a building on it, it was just a lot, right? And that's why it's most of the lot. people didn't vote for. It. Okay, so let's let's let the subcommittee, right? Yeah, and then I, you just, know that we're this interested. Is, this is the way I feel. You know, it's no secret, that. and, and okay. I think right now. For an investment for the town, that yeah. that, that this, this piece of property that's in front of us is a very good investment for us. There's okay. no more land here. Everybody already knows that. But you're going to go back. You're going to ask the people to pay for another $400,000 for this piece of property on top of all the other things that have passed right now in town. I, I know. So, I understand. You know, and there are other things on the agenda coming up that are uh, going to be hitting people's pocketbooks at the same time. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And the seven hundred thousand shortfall. Yeah. That's right. So Lots. let's let's see what what we can bring Anything back the next meeting. Okay. All right. So we'll, um, David, we'll make sure that's on the agenda for the seventh. It's on the agenda for the seventh. Uh, we're, we're just just to uh, state the obvious. We're going to have to do a lot of financial planning uh, in order to move this project forward. Yep. Okay. Excellent. You know, okay. yeah, we get the library coming down the road around the corner one way or another, too. Yeah, so, we'll find out in know. July about that grant. That's okay. what I said. We have projects with money. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so select board priorities. Um, so last meeting we talked about um, working with the finance committee to come up with um, kind of a, a plan of attack of where we should spend our time and in what order. So thank you to everybody that provided feedback in that regard. Um, and I think um, I, I didn't have everything in advance of the meeting. I, I just received some of it today, so I didn't have a chance to do any sort of formal scoring. But it looks like, generally speaking, the two primary areas that people are interested in talking, um, talking about sooner rather than later is to get more information from the uh, Department of Revenue and, and bring people in to talk about Financing options, overrides, and again, this is not this is not a recommendation. It's just information gathering so that we're smarter about how all of this stuff works. And public safety issues seem to be the two that came out on top. Does that make sense to everybody who? You know, there, there was a, there's, there's a lot of other ideas here. I, I had wrote, written one with the wage study, which we're working with UMass with anyway. But that should be just an ongoing thing every year or two, as I wrote down. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing with uh, the IT. You know, what we had spoken about getting things together with the school. Mm -hmm. so maybe we could do something on a county level or something along with the lines of UMass. Yeah. You know, these are all options on each one of your points, but they all need to be discussed again, you know? Right. Yep, I, I completely agree. And I think the idea would be to, to bring some of these issues up when we have a meeting focused on these things. Yeah. So right now we have meeting uh, June 7th and June 21st. Is that right? 7th sounds pretty busy to me. 7th already sounds pretty busy. Yes. So I'm wondering if maybe if we're going to be bring in invited guests that the 21st would be a date that we would try to do that. Okay. Can we have a... Can if we can talk next meeting and get everybody's feedback on where they are so that we as a group feel confident in the ways we're going in this direction 
I mean, if everybody's got a five on something, let's go do something else. Let's get yeah. that right off our list. Yeah. And let's get our priorities on there. And then let's let's be able to discuss the priorities so that everybody's on the same page. If with everybody's them. on a one, two, or three, let's concentrate on a one, two, or three. Yeah. I mean, I don't need to talk. Yeah. I personally don't think the charter is worth talking about. The board stipends are worth talking about. I've got some fives on here. And yeah. if people feel yeah. differently, then let's. Let's hash it out before I, I, we bring anybody yeah. in to talk about I anything. Would, I would like another day to renumber my categories. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, that's I'll fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Is there an uh, auditor coming in to explain the audit to us? Yeah. Would that be? Do you have uh, a date scheduled because, with Tanya? Uh, Linda said something before she went home. She walked in here and she said David Eisenhower, Eisenthal was planning on coming on the 7th. Do we have them scheduled on the seventh day? But yes, I, we do. So maybe we should change that to the twenty-first. That's what I'm because we had talked about maybe having all of the financial folks here together yeah, at, at the one same meeting. Time. Yeah, well, let's, let me let me give you a preview of what's coming up on the twenty-first. Twenty-first uh, or seventh? Seventh. And she also uh, said he would like to Thank be you. here to hear the auditor. Yeah, I think so it'd be a good it'd idea. So it make a lot of sense. All right, so we have tentatively the audit presentation for 2016. Now, we have not received the draft audit yet, so that's supposed to happen this Friday. Okay. So if, if, there's, if that doesn't come in, I'll certainly let you, let you know. The treasurer is going to meet with you right after that to talk about the borrowing and have you authorize the borrowing that for the capital projects that are coming up that for which we'll need money. Mm -hmm. uh, Municipal Building Committee has been invited to talk to you. Uh, we have a meeting with the fire st substation building committee. <coughs> we have a big issue having to do with the health insurance trust. Uh, Jerry, you wanted to talk about the sewer impact fees. Uh, we have an APR for Lawrence Plain Road. Got the old Hadley flea market issue and uh, a couple of other matters. Which so date that's, is this? That's June 7th, so that's a big agenda right okay. now. Okay. Well, and. If we're going to talk about the Hampshire Trust, shouldn't Joe Shea be here? Uh, yes, I've reached out to him. He's, yeah, so I've reached out to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so he might be the 21st too then. No, it sounds like he's already on the 7th. He's on the 7th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This, because you reached out, I didn't get the feeling he reached back. Not yeah. yet. Okay. Okay, so we don't have but him confirmed. It, we don't have them confirmed, but there is a vote that needs to be hap that needs to happen in June. So you okay. have two bites at the apple. I just put it on. Right. I mean, I prefer to have him here. Would consider Terry Williams on the twenty-first? Well, yeah, that's what I. That's where we were starting this conversation. Yeah, was initially that's what you suggested. Right. But you know, I suppose he could fit in the picture on the twenty-first too. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they're going to be here. Yeah. The tri-board's going to be here too at that time. Okay. What's everybody doing on the 14th or the 28th? Um, 28th is going into the holiday. Going into? <laughs> when, you, when you start 4th of July on like June 6th or yeah. something? Yeah. yeah. The camp's late early. I start the campers are ready in New Hampshire, huh? <laughs> yeah. I guess the 14th is a better idea. I think so. I think we've been told. <laughs> when is the fireworks on Hamden Beach? Is everybody available on the 14th if we add a meeting? <laughs> you are? Okay. okay. John, you available on the 14th? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll be back. Okay, so can we add a meeting on the 14th, David? Yeah, done. Done, okay. Oh, yay. All right, and then so we'll The Municipal Buildings up. Committee is waiting for direction from the select board. I'd still like that to be on the 7th. Right, yeah. they had a, so they had a we, It's been yeah. longstanding yeah. and they've, they've kind of postponed and and what and backed off and and we have new issues that, you know like that we're certainly speaking of this evening so i'd like to advocate for leaving them on the seventh if we could please Good idea. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all right so so again idea we've got these i mean and actually some of the ones that were ranked like that hampshire trust having joe shea even though it was under the people related but there's an imminent reason to push forward with that anyway but we'll focus um and then in terms of public safety, maybe um, we can try to focus in on the 21st then if we're going to add the 14th and hone in on some of those issues and talk to the chiefs mm -hmm. about the, um, one of the things I had just, 
one-on-one -on -one with Mike Spanknable mentioned is that if, in fact, he's looking for um, to move forward with that staffing plan that he presented that we weren't able to fund fully, that um, it would be a good idea to have some sort of an actual kind of sense of an implementation plan from him, like from a management standpoint, if you're going to bring these people on, what are they going to be doing? How are they going to get trained? Who's doing the training? All, all of that kind of stuff. Nothing, you know, nothing big fancy I PowerPoint, but just try to understand. Has the regionalization come back up again with dispatch? Yes. Well, it, it's come up in conversation, but okay. I think we, I'd like to talk about it again. Yeah. We brought it up in the ambulance uh, yeah. committee. Yeah. Came up in the ambulance committee for sure. I think a lot of these other issues on here could be touched on in the tri board meeting like human resources mm -hmm. you know what is the school presently doing to handle it and could we make it work better joining forces or something you yeah. know and, and I think the things I like that the IT we talked about some yeah. sort of mm -hmm. group effort too mm -hmm. so it might be yeah like you're saying in the tri board if we have somebody from the schools here yeah. Danny or somebody from the has the tri board been calendar? not yet no Right. And I think we're waiting for Looks like it's going to be June 21. Okay. Put in the tri board for the 21st? Uh, Donald just suggested that. No. We, we hadn't scheduled one yet. No, but that, I thought that was our discussion was going that way, wasn't it? You had talked about it. I, yeah. I didn't get a Because clear we were going to have Terry Williams come in and everybody right. else, and they should be part of this conversation, listen yeah. to the people so that are coming in, I think. Do you want to see if you can confirm Terry for that date David and yeah. then that would then and then we could um, invite the school committee yep and finance committee of course okay I would think that would be the first meeting we're gonna really dive into what 219 is gonna look at look mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. know and the school committee should be here and the finance committee definitely right you know okay is everybody good with that schedule for now? Just bite it off in chunks? Sure, so we'll be here. Good. We're going to get a copy of everybody's uh, information yeah, I can, regarding this. Yeah, I can scan these and send them along. The planning board I had on here that they were looking for their scanner, did we move that along so that that is in the process of a purchase or at least everybody's on the same page with the purchasing of the piece of equipment that will benefit both the planning board and the, bu the building inspector? Yeah. So the the uh, the planning board has a request for transfer from the reserve fund for twelve thousand dollars. I don't know that they've acted upon it. I don't think they. Well, wasn't there discussion on them possibly trying to find a less expensive scanner? Well, we had that, that discussion that, that seemed like a enormous amount of money for us. Yeah. So I mean, you know, one of the things that we did do is we met uh, privately with one of the planning board members talk about what would be uh, uh, a suitable scanner for for plans and you know ultimately we decided you get what you pay for if you, if you get you want to get the right kind of scanner f I don't particularly if you're doing yeah. reductions and you don't want distortions but the problem is the size the size of the actual plans like right. from the engineering firms uh, I don't I don't think we have a scanner here I, I know we don't yeah we don't that's why they want that's to. yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, we still go either to Copycat. I think Staples has got a big one now, too. But uh, we either go to Copycat and Amherst or Staples, and we're, we're spending a lot of money, uh, the rest of the departments, uh, on copies of plans, you know. We also have a fire chief that doesn't have any fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's this is a one-off investment that I mean, we gotta we got to feed. You can't, you can't just take it and I'll go and one. Can't this come from capital? It is a capital item. It is a capital item. Yeah. We're scanning. We're scanning. Right, but they've well, fallen woefully behind. Let me check. Let me check in with the planning board. Find out where they are with that that paperwork, because that request really needs to come to you from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the process, because you guys have to approve the funds, not yeah. us. Okay. You know, uh, maybe you could take a little bit out of each department to fund it. Water, sewer, you know, DPW, priorities, planning board, select board. 
we've already authorized yeah, the money. We, I mean, yeah. I mean, and again, if you, you remember the conversation, this is we've got pieces of place, paper. You take something from somebody you've already given them. Yeah. No. And it's a, a one-time expense that it's an investment. And the other idea was that we might then be able, to your point, go back to the university and maybe get some interns and folks who could actually get the work done, but they can't do it if we don't have the ex equipment for them to do it with. Yeah. We could do a GoFund on Facebook. <laughs> Which follows you into know, the next Facebook. thought regarding <laughs> identifying yeah. senior needs. Okay, you Tax said it. Work -offs. You said it, UMass. Maybe they got something used that we can use. Or buy from them. Or buy from them. Let's get the process going, I guess. Yeah. Well. Let's find out what we need, and then we can go from there. Well, we have nothing now, so anything's better than nothing exactly, at this yeah. point. Yeah, but let's spend the money wisely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. so okay. on to the next? Yeah. Okay, so special town meeting, uh, fall Dan, town meeting countdown. Dan Dave? had a question. Oh, sorry, Dan. I just got a quick question on this topic. I noticed on the sheet that the assessors were listed. The yeah, assessors are listed on. On the. Uh, oh, on the sheet. Focus, yeah. Yeah. So under other, um, we have opportunities for yeah. consolidation, outsourcing, um, removal of operational log jams, inspections, and assessor. So uh, the reason I'm, the reason I put that down there is when I was thinking about opportunities for consolidation and outsourcing. Um, one of the things we had talked about was looking to see if there was if if we have the capacity. There are certain functions that we could theoretically outsource or regionalize so that Hadley doesn't own them anymore, but we're, you know, like we do with um, Northampton with the uh, veterans, right? But then there may be opportunity for us to have some capacity to actually bring on um, additional work as well. So if we have uh, any areas where we could do that, we should look at it. So again, it's a discussion point. It's not a recommendation of any kind. It's just something to talk about. Yep. Yep. So that's why I thought was to have some conversation about that. Your thoughts? You're thinking. Mm -hmm. I know we had had that discussion before a few years ago about outsourcing and bringing in other towns' work. Insourcing too. Or yeah. Insourcing, yeah, insourcing yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, the problem with that is I know we had discussed it with are not discussed it, but discussed Amherst. Amherst also has a larger staff. They have three full-time people. Mm -hmm. well, I wouldn't think about Amherst if yeah. I was going to insource. Uh, no, Amherst insources well, they other communities. Okay. Yeah, but they have a, a, a second person there that makes a substantial amount of money that works in the other towns. Yeah. Yeah, so again, it's something we should, you know, I, I think we should at least look at it. You know. all, the, all the properties right now and the assessors is online on on uh, DG, I guess, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean we're we're ahead of the game a little bit, you might say anyway. That's more requirement now. Not a solid requirement, but something that the state is looking for that they want mapping yeah. and property records online. Okay. okay. Um, so, special town meeting fall countdown. David, you've got a memo here outlining that. Right. So, uh, it's no rest for the wicked. Uh, we uh, we're already preparing for the uh, fall town meeting. Uh, I've put together a provisional countdown calendar for that, and I think it's perhaps most useful to read it backwards from December 4th uh, when the tax rate is due to be set by the assessors in the Department of Revenue in order to provide for the collector's office to, uh, to publish the, uh, the tax bills and send them out by uh, December 31st. That's a critical deadline. Um, so going backwards from there, if we're talking about an override, and I know that that's a small word but a, with a big meaning, if we're talking about an uh, override, then just sort of backing out uh, what the steps, what steps we'd have to follow in order to make that happen in order for the tax rate to be set on time. We're talking about a special town meeting that would occur on October 5th, which is about a, three weeks earlier than we normally have it. We usually have it at the last Thursday 
of October or the first Thursday of November. <coughs> so this would be the first Thursday in October. Um, we talked about having a special town meeting warm, forum, rather, sorry. Uh, we talked about getting uh, uh, public input into the FY19 budget process. Uh, Excuse so me yes. for interrupting, but in order for us to get the tax rate set on time, you're advocating for having the, in the special town meeting two and a half weeks early. That's, the, that's why the dates if, have changed. If you're doing an override. If you're not doing an override, okay. then you can have the special town meeting. Otherwise, we're not able to time. get in on the tax rate assessment. Right, mm -hmm. okay. right. And then that has financial consequences for the town that we do not want to get into. Okay. I'm sorry for so there's plenty. There's plenty of room in this for adjustment. Uh, starting on May 12th, we have the capital up, uh, plan upgrades have been sent out to the departments with a due date of June 30th. Uh, at your next meeting, uh, tonight's meeting, I'm asking that you set a fall special town meeting date of October 5th. This is flexible. You don't have to make that decision tonight. Um, open the warrant on June 7th, close it on August 2nd, uh, and then the Finance Committee, CPA, Capital Planning, uh, Planning Board, et cetera, do all the recommendations and we send it out for Town Council review by September 13th. Feels like there's a lot of time in here, but there's really not. Then we have to post it two weeks before the town meeting, September 21st. And then we uh, have a public forum and then the special time meeting. Okay. All right. So, again, this is, you know, take it under advisement. There's no decision made yet, but just so everybody knows, I guess, what we're, uh, would be entailed, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions for David? Is this going to be posted on the, have the, is this going to be posted in your, um, on the, Web? Website? Yeah. Um, if it is, I'd just like an explanation here as to why the yeah. town meeting would be early so that people understand it. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think communicating early and often is definitely going to be the order of the day for anything uh, like this. This is, this is something that's <coughs> new and different, and we obviously want to have a lot of opportunity for people to have uh, their questions answered. We may not that it's early because we've always just had it in October. So yeah. mm -hmm. the wonks will. The who? Wonks. The, the people wonks. who follow us that watch it and expect every every year. Gotta watch what you week. call people there, Jerry. It's a common It's those term. 120 <laughs> people we can name common them. Term. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we do have an executive yeah. session scheduled Never tonight. Um, we okay to go into no announcements? Way. And I actually, um, and Donald, I'm sorry, I don't want to. I was going to ask you, because you seem to be the most, I think you have knowledge of <coughs> um, I received a couple of questions today about some equipment uh, trailer that was over at the public safety complex. And I think you've... Did I spoke to the chief about it. Right. Can you just explain what that is? Because... Uh, it's a truck that was given to the town at no cost, according to the chief, and they're looking into using it as a disaster communication truck for all of the 20 communities in Hampshire County. Okay. With this is being addressed by uh, the fire chiefs associations. Okay. So there's no for this isn't necessarily a piece of equipment that's coming into the town of Hadley because I know people are. Is they, it through tri-state or is it through state? Whatever. I'm okay. not sure. Federal, Federal so, came in. FEMA, so. Right. Okay. But, but so that's really more of a, a regional issue, and it sounds mm -hmm. like Mike's going to be dealing with his regional contacts yeah, about There's no with cost us. to the town presently at all. Right. So Just that the truck is. Well, that, that, then that would be a cost. So, yeah. yeah. So we and I, that's why the calls came in. People were wondering, because they know this whole issue with the substation and everything, if we're saying that we didn't have room, and all of a sudden another piece of equipment showed up. So we should probably you know, get an update from the chief when we talk about about that. Okay, um, announcements? I'd just like to talk a little bit about our little traffic tie-up that we had over on uh, Hockenham Road uh, on last Sunday. And I know <coughs> that it's, uh, it's a hot point for a lot of people. Um.
couple things for everybody to understand. First and foremost, it wasn't just the flea market that was happening last week. There was graduations at Hampshire College and at Mount Holyoke. So we're not anticipating the same problem to be this weekend that we had last weekend. However, we certainly understand that the flea market is a very popular place to be on Memorial Day weekend, and we anticipate there will be a lot of traffic down there uh, unless there's a snow, a rainstorm. So, uh, you know, if people understand you have to change your, your habits that are there. Uh, Mr. Shala did have the police officers were there. Um, the extra traffic that we feel occurred down there had a lot more to do with the graduations than it had to do with the flea markets. So uh, I got the phone calls. I understand uh, the concerns of the people. I understand that the bridge is getting fixed. Hopefully it'll be done in the 14 weeks that they told us, so that won't be a tie-up anymore. We know this weekend is going to be a big uh, weekend for the flea market, and the graduations are not going to occur, and the police officers will be there on this Sunday as well. So hopefully uh, there'll be a little less uh, of a tie-up and an inconvenience uh, on Lawrence Plain Road on Sunday. And we'll know when we're going through on the bus to, to right. the cemetery. Yeah. So we'll see what type of situation it is as we Was drive it similar by. to opening day at the beginning of the year? It was similar to opening day at Wrigley. No, the first, <laughs> Wrigley. Yeah. The first flea market was excessive also. The first flea market uh, was a little tamped down because of the weather. It wasn't exactly warm for those yeah. first couple. They were busy, um, but by no standards, um, this past weekend was busier than the first flea market last year. Mm -hmm. Flea market last year, the first flea market of last year was the was yeah. one of the busiest day uh, that I've seen. And this past Sunday was by far the busiest I've ever seen. Just to buy Does these. The bottleneck occur once the lot becomes filled and yes. people are trying to get in and there's no way to let them in that's and you can't continue the traffic moving along. Yes, that's part, that's part of the issue. Yes. Yeah. And there's no turnarounds anywhere, they just have to keep going. No, and that, as you flush, they turn around and just triple the problem. Correct, and you've been trying to avoid shutting the entry gate off of the flea market because that doesn't stop people from still coming to the area. All it does is it just postpones the traffic from getting in. So yeah. it's, a, it's a last resort and we've, this past weekend was there Is one direction more problematic than the other? Going southerly versus going northerly? Um, I think the, it, it, it can depend, but I think that southerly can be a little bit busier just because the you have the opportunity for more traffic to come from the highway. Um, so, yeah, and, and the pro the compounding the problem is the bridge also because the first one this year was they were parked on the bridge and no one could go either way because I drove through it. I happened to hear what was going on and I drove through it to see how bad the first one was and it was real bad. And the same thing happened Sunday again. So. Correct. The bridge does. It, <coughs> people are coming through the traffic light, not expecting for the light to turn, and they're stuck. Yeah. Which backs up the way, and yeah. no one can move. There's no courtesy out there whatsoever. Well, it's it's kind of unknown when you're sitting at the light around that corner, and the cars are stopped right at Bay Road. That, oh, I that's know. it. But they you don't got room let for through. two cars and. 10, 10 or 15 yeah. cars. Oh, no, through. you're not going to get in before me. So they go like this, and then you can't come across the bridge and take a turn. I've been there myself. <laughs> when we get to that point, we're essentially tying up our patrols that are on duty to stop and, and st keep traffic off of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other announcements? Uh, just remember this Sunday is the Memorial Day Parade. Um, we usually start around 10 30, quarter of 11. Um, going to the cemeteries, uh, there will be a parade in the center of North Hadley as usual, um, and then again at the Holy Rosary Cemetery, and we do make it to all the other cemeteries also, but the band doesn't join us until the Holy Rosary, um, and at then at that point the parade begins at 2 o'clock on Russell Street and goes to 
West Street Common where it will have its last ceremony and disperse and um, everybody usually is invited back to the Legion for refreshments um, offered by the Legion and so come out and have a good time and march with us and love to see everybody there or take pictures or take pictures I'll probably take you can march this year. You're financed. They said he couldn't take pictures of the march. I'd be taking the same picture of the same back of the head if I was marching. Please don't go by me. We Donald? thought the pavers were coming tomorrow, but they patched and paved everything today. Oh, they okay. swept the whole lot yesterday. How's it look? Patched. Mm -hmm. Better. But, yeah, but the, you know the upper part. They put a lot of blacktop in there. Okay. You know, and all the legion everywhere where there were bigger holes are patched. So, twenty-four tons of blacktop can only go so far. You know, <laughs> it's a lot of blacktop. Sounds like a lot. Well, it's Sounds a ten ten wheeler good. truck load. That's all. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Any, anything else before uh, executive session? No, I'm going to make a motion to go into executive session, not to reconvene an open session. And as per provision of ML. MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or position of the public body in the chair. So declares um, this is in concern with the police department. Yes. Chair, I declare that um, holding a discussion regarding this item in open session could have a detrimental impact on the <coughs> Yes. 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 Yes.